One of the greatest things about this program is that the producer here at Olelo just asked the three of us to count down from, well, he said, please count to 10 or count down to one, I guess it was. And I happen to have two math teachers on here as my guests for the second half. And Dan here on my left had to count down differently. And I loved it because the minute he started counting, I thought, is there a way to count in algebra? Maybe he'll count in geometry. Is there a way to count in statistics? And then I have Sean over here on my far left. And these two gentlemen are from Waipahu High School. And they have absolutely, without a doubt, changed not only the statistics, the facts about how many kids now complete their math classes, but they're changing lifestyles also, not only for themselves as teachers, but for the kids in their classes and probably the parents too. I heard them last week at the TEDx program. I scooped up a few people from that thing. It was really, really great. And I was so impressed by the vocabulary and what you shared. So I'm going to say hello and then let you two tell the audience between the two of you part of what I heard or as much as what I heard at TEDx because it needs to be heard again and again and again. There are many other schools on Oahu, on the neighbor islands and around the nation that could use the skills that you teach. So just dive in and do it. Okay, um, do we kind of want to start with the importance of words a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. All right. I, I think the biggest thing we found as of late is just as Kealoha was saying earlier, the importance of words, um, how we organize them in our heads and what we've realized schemas, basically how you connect words, whether it be math or the things that we're good at in life, it affects the possibilities that we see. Um, I guess from kind of there, like math, how do we? So to more focus on mathematics, um, when we're talking about words like addition, subtraction, operation, equation, things like that, um, you know, it's good to understand those words. And my mind goes to mush. <laughs> it's good to understand those words by themselves. However, to have a big picture understanding of how all of those words connect based on concept, definition, um, really helps paint a very clear big picture for the kids so that when they're going through experiences in the classroom, they now have an organized structure so that they have a place to relate these experiences and the ideas. Because as we said before, um, words really are just stand-in points for experiences, ideas, concepts. Um, it's a lot easier to tell somebody hey, I went to the bank instead of saying, hey, I went to the place that lets me take money out. Sometimes they yell at me if I take too much out. Um, <laughs> so getting the kids to see the importance of words and how it affects their perception of math and things outside of math is kind of what we've been doing. Is it like a map that you act like a mind map of words that looks like a family tree? Or how do you, how do you begin to uh, lay it um, out so that they're interested? I think the big thing we've tried to express is it's not mind mapping because mind mapping is using what you already think about those words. A lot of times if we load an experience into a word that affects it, for instance, if you were in a relationship and it didn't go so well, a lot of times we attach the word bad now with relationship. So the way you get into a next relationship automatically in your head, you have relationship off of that bad. And so you're starting to already like tense up. Whereas if you had a great experience, it'd be like, oh yeah, this is another relationship. So we start off by relating it to the kids kind of like that. It's like, think about the definitions rather than your experiences. Kind of like Taimani was saying, erasing those prior and past experiences. For us with math, it's like, all right, you need to stop thinking about those experiences and let's focus on the definitions. So basically moving away from perceptual thinking and more towards critical thinking which focuses more on the idea that that definition is expressing. Um, I think uh, one of the big things that we've been able to teach the kids that really, I and mean, so it's relieving because we are able to use math as a vehicle to teach them how to organize ideas in their head, telling them basically, hey, school is an opportunity to practice that. And the more you do that, the better you get at it, when you get that opportunity to do something you're passionate about, you're going to be 10 times more efficient at it. I mean, how many people go through school? And I think the big thing that we found in the definition of learning, 
what is it to really learn? We started looking at that definition and we actually made maps of it and went through Wikipedia. <laughs> it's been about 800 hours of making maps, but yeah. you know, um, I don't know. How did you two get hooked into this together? Are you, are you um, teaching the same level of math at Waipahu? Some of our classes are, yeah. Um, originally how we met last year was my first year teaching. And you look so young. I, Do they think you're a student? Um, luckily, I, I stick out a little bit. I and guess you so, do in my uh, part. <laughs> and so I'm pretty easily associated with as a teacher. Staff, um, okay. <laughs> and so luckily I haven't had that, that misconception. But um, during my first year, Sean's part of the math department as well. And so him, a few others, just kind of, you know, helped get me adjusted to the school, show me around. And um, last year in February, Sean wanted to start a test preparation program for our students for the HSA. And... Um, you know, he sent a bunch of stuff out, and I was one of the only people who responded as being interested. And so from there, we just started working together, and observation from observation, we've kind of got to where we are now. Did you ever expect the success that you have? Share, mm. share your success. Share with the audience what you guys have Define accomplished. Define success. Well, the percentages <laughs> that I heard were phenomenal. From the students that have retaken the algebra class, like I've, I need to go to your class, really, I do. If I show up in class on Monday, you know why I'm there. <laughs> I can barely balance my checkbook. <laughs> um, well, I think the success that we, we knew something was right, because when we were looking at building the HSA program, we'd ask students that had an A. Like HSA? What Hawaii does it... State Assessment. Okay. So the test that was actually just given first round in the state, um, we asked the kids that had A's, like, all right, how many math words can you think of that relate to quadratics? A kid that had an A, boom, 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 would list like 15, 20 ideas. And it was like, wow. Ask a struggling student, how many words can you relate to this? Uh, what's that word mean? Or maybe one or two words. Mm -hmm. So we started to realize like, wow, the connections, if you're not connecting these ideas, that affects your ability to perceive a problem and think through it. From that, we started to ask the students, we saw, all right, well, let's, let's map out this problem. How would you connect the ideas that you see in this problem to solve it? kid that had an A could just map it out very clearly. And it was like, okay, yeah, wow. That's how I thought through the problem. Student that was struggling, all of a sudden it was one word and didn't know where to go. And then that's when we started to kind of get keyed in on this idea of motivation. Um, if you don't know where to go, so many times teachers mistake that for laziness, um, not caring. But if you don't know where to go, it's, some, it's like being lost in a forest. And when we started mapping it for the students, all of a sudden they're like, oh, hey, I can, I can get through this. That's starting to make sense. And then we start asking them you know, in their lives, like, what's an area you struggle with in your life? Maybe you didn't organize the words right. Or maybe we can help you look at that. So getting the buy-in, because they start to see the value of not just math, it works in their life, and I think that's what's led to the statistics of our classes. To share yeah. some of the statistics, would you? Because when you put that up on the board, I yeah. thought to myself, I mean, this is phenomenal, really, it is. And I can imagine a, a career that's really going to blossom outside of Waipahu High School for you. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully we get a chance to spread this to as many educators and learners inside mm -hmm. outside the classroom as possible. Adults? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anybody who's willing and open to learn and hopefully even those who are not necessarily willing and open to learn as well. Um, I guess some of the statistics, like I said, last year was my first year teaching and my passing rate for Algebra 1 was only about it was 52% somewhere in there, um, which for me, um, not being as familiar with the Title I school as you know, somebody who's been working there for a while, I was pretty devastated. I was like, I'm, I'm a pretty terrible teacher. Um, <laughs> and so it kind of ate at me a little bit. But this year, since implementing the program, 52% was about my quarterly pass rate. Um, quarterly pass rate now has been about 87%. And so... Um, That's so terrific. It, it must feel so no, good. It, seeing the students feel you know, empowered and motivated going, I can do this. I know how to do this. And since we have them teaching themselves that as Sean was talking about earlier with motivation, by giving them a methodology where it's like, okay, I'm overwhelmed, I'm lost now, but I know if I do this, I follow these steps, eventually I'll get to that point where I'm going to you know, start understanding or start seeing the connections. And what has the feedback been in the community? Like, are there other schools calling you? 
And if they're not, I'm going to make sure that they are. I'll, I'll help you guys um, out. But no, really, like, what has the feedback been, even on your own high school campus? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think one of the biggest problems that we, we've run into is how people organize ideas affects how they perceive new ideas, just like our math students. So often when you're working with adults, those ideas, that map in their head, is twice as big and those solid connections are really hard to budge. So everyone's trying their best and they're, you got in Waipahu, we're really blessed. There's so many great teachers. They're doing amazing things. A lot of times though, we found that we had to go back ourselves. I mean, we've read cognitive psych books and tried to understand why this is working. And in that, we've expanded our own maps. So a lot of the people when we are like, hey, we're not lecturing. We haven't put one problem on the board all year. We have kids teaching themselves. It's often, that's great. And it's kind of like, wow. So part of our, I think our big mission right now is to help adults and everyone try to understand until you shift your perception, you may not be seeing all the possibilities. I think that's what makes kids so amazing because they'll shift their perception so quickly and they'll see new possibilities. As adults, I think one of the challenges is we get so locked in and it's rare that we, you know, you run into people that are open-minded that are like, wait, don't worry, I'm gonna take 40 years of how I've thought about something and I wanna listen to you. And I think that's something that's really inspired us, especially at the TED, was the community, when you find people that are open-minded, that are willing to bear their soul and just kind of listen to you, it, it's kind of like, yeah, well, this is what we're thinking. And when people stop and think about, hey, you know what? When I think, I do think in schemas. But however you learn it, there's different ways to learn things. But in the end of the day, you have to organize ideas in your head. And I think when people make that connection, that's when the community and people in the community are like, wow. I think uh, people we found, I don't know, your experiences. Uh, mm basically the same thing when you have people who are open and willing to take that you know however long they've been alive and thinking about stuff and just put that on break for a little bit and listen to other people's ideas it, it definitely creates a unique situation where you can express that however as Sean was saying not everybody's like that and so to try and explain a new idea to somebody get them to kind of think about it differently when all those ideas have been cemented together the way they are um, regardless of, you know, the background of the person, if it's inside education or not, it can be kind of difficult to get them to see, um, you know, how it is that we all think in schemas and how that affects us individually, as a community, and entirely as a society. So. And there's probably people that are comfortable teaching the way they're teaching. And if it's not broke, why fix it? Just because you guys are doing so much better sometimes it's uncomfortable to change. I remember speaking, I stopped you for just a moment at the TED program and I, I connected, like for me it was no problem to see that words are the dynamic that make math happen. Linguistics in college was one of my favorite classes and existential exactly. psychology that forced my mind to stretch to the wildest limits. Yeah. And that's probably why I enjoy doing this show so much because there's so much thought process put into it. In my mind as I'm listening to you, wanting to connect with what you're saying to me. I'm also wanting to digest how can I ask a question that will form up to give me the answer that would be beneficial to the audience. So that whole floor plan. I feel like between your math teaching and the other educators that could learn from you, there's a leap that needs to be made. Okay. Um, so uh, to go along with that, I think a lot of teachers offer a lot of very unique perspectives to their classroom and um, you know we're doing something clearly different obviously but there's a lot of other educators out there who are trying new things making different observations that we haven't seen yet um, we just you know so happen to stumble on the something that's been fortunate enough we've been able to make these gains very quickly but um, we feel that a lot of teachers have a unique perspective and observations they can add into it so we're always open to try and, you know, what is it that you're doing, you know, to create the success in your classroom? Can we merge these together? Can we get everybody's ideas and try and turn this into a, you know, a culmination of unique ideas, perspectives, and observations to get the most success out of all of our students? So 
it's you know sometimes difficult. Teachers have busy schedules, yeah. not a whole lot of time to meet. Um, there's a lot of roadblocks from, from sometimes. From 52 to 86 percent, it feels like more people could be listening. More people could be listening. Are there other speaking engagements that you have set up, or what? What is it that you need to share this information? What do you need most? Um, I, I think the big thing we're hoping to do is, you know, speaking more speaking opportunities, opportunities like this, like people willing to take that risk. We actually, funny enough, we went to the Wikipedia page. Wikipedia, great source for information. <laughs> I like it. We too. just go through and we make maps, like trying to make sure that our perspective of ideas is more effective or more efficient than what we currently have because we're limited to the way that we organize ideas. So for us, I think speaking or even viral, trying to get, you know, whether it be a slideshow through social networks, just getting more people thinking about the fact that you basically, in a way, how we're teaching our kids is almost like cognitive therapy. They're thinking about how they relate words, and if they relate them in an ineffective way, it's affecting their perceptions. So what we hope to convey, and it's not just for kids, is that for adults, like that thing that you may have struggled with, or maybe that thing that you're already good at, what, what if you could get better? What if you're just missing four or five words that if you had thought about and brought into that schema in your mind, what would be the possibilities? often it's just shifting one word or how you see something that all of a sudden like I think Keloha was a lot of what he was talking about really sums it up just the possibilities are limitless and unfortunately I think humans as humans we limit ourselves so often by the constraints of how we just organize words I, I began to think of ways to share how you two teach to other teachers even with regard to their own topics they can help broaden the minds of students, not just in the high school level, but how about the young, younger people or in adult education or in the college system? There are plenty of kids that drop out of college because it's too challenging. They don't get what the words really mean. And if you have something that works to the degree that you do, you have a huge gift to share. You just be speaking on the circuit. <laughs> Try and hopefully yeah. we'll get there. I mean, we would definitely like to get to the point where, I mean, we're constantly being able to speak at schools, conferences, seminars. I mean, yes. anything to share this idea with people. And, um, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll, I, I mean, I'm not gifted enough to write a book on my own right now. But yeah. if we could maybe some sort of media outlet, like you said, viral videos, um, maybe just short little books to get the idea out to people and... Well, the, what I liked the most was that I felt like you were having fun and so were the students. Oh, definitely. I think the big thing that's happened in our classrooms where we stop lecturing, we're not putting problems on the board. For my repeater class, so back to maybe the st stats a little bit, 12% was my pass rate and now it's at 65%. And these are students that have failed multiple times that really, it's not that they're not capable. They just, nobody's really took the time to show them that, hey, you know what? You just got to organize the ideas in your head until it becomes clear. From 12% to 64%? Yeah. 65. 65, excuse me, 65. Sorry, sorry. Oh my God. percent 60... That's one student. It's, that's huge. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's tremendous. Somebody has to stand up and pay attention. Besides you two and myself, there's a lot more people in the community that could really... I mean, you, should, you guys need to invite these people into your class. I'm just telling you that right now. Not just high schools, but anywhere. You could have them at a guest speaking event. If you don't think people are listening and you can't figure out why, I think these two have an answer. I've, I've completely enjoyed having you on because there's value to what you're sharing. I think that it's important and listening is a skill. I, I spoke earlier about um, speaking at Radford a couple weeks ago and the topic was leadership and I gave an example of leading and following. And I staffed a women's leadership conference a seminar and the leader could, was the only one that could talk. The women could not. The followers could not. And the leader told the follower, one follower, pick up that carrot and throw it away. So that's exactly what the woman did. She picked up the carrot, she looked all around the room, and she saw a trash can at the far end of the cafeteria. And she threw it, she chucked it all the way across the cafeteria. And the leader just stared at her. And I said, well, to the class that I was giving the, the talk to, was she a good follower? And they were all appalled at what the girl did. And they said, but yeah, she was a good follower. She did exactly what the leader said. 
And then I said, what could you learn from being that follower? And so we went on to talk about the dynamics of words and how they make a difference everywhere in our lives. Again, back to the math piece, I was so excited because, like I said, I can barely get my checkbook balanced. I like the way they do it online now. It kind of fix it, does it all up for me and my bank does it for me. But there are so many skills I could have used. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Interior Design. And one of my greatest fears was always having to order cabinetry and get something that was too small or not big enough and fit it in a place when they were $60,000 cabinetry and really blow yeah. a whole project. So I stayed in the front as a showroom manager so I didn't have to talk with numbers. I could have used you. That's why I said I'm coming to class on Monday. I'm coming to class More than on welcome. Monday. More than welcome. <laughs> I think I'm going to have, anybody else want to go to class with me on Monday? You're welcome. Look, he just said, Sean said we're welcome. <laughs> Waipahu High School, we're welcome. We're almost out of time and I want to be sure that you share everything that you need to in this moment. So let me ask you, Dan, is there any last moment piece that you'd like to share with the audience because they need to know? Um, I think the biggest thing probably is not necessarily pertaining to what we do, but just be open to listen to somebody else's idea. Take the chance to set aside your prior beliefs about stuff and listen to what that person has to say because for all you know, you could learn something else from it and it could change your life. Um, so I guess that's my biggest thing is always giving other people the opportunity to share with them, you know, an idea, a gift, because um, who knows where it could go from there. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I guess to piggyback off that, on the same idea when someone, just to listen, listening is thinking about what that person's saying. What, what do they mean by that word? What experiences have they maybe attached to that word that they feel to convey it to you? I feel like something we've learned from this is anytime anybody takes the time to share a thought, they obviously th are thinking it for a reason. I don't think many people stop and think. I, I know I didn't used to. Well, if they want to share it with me, there's, there's a reason and I should probably try to figure it out instead of my preconceived notion of what they are saying. Honor somebody for their thoughts. Beautiful. Thank you, you two, for being on the program this evening. This is turning into a late night show. I'm just going to share that I have a slot at 11 p.m. every Saturday night uh, for the next year. Nice. And so it's through 2012, and this program airs once a month, or excuse me, four times a month on Saturday night. So I like to call it late night programming. Perfect. And you two are part of the team tonight of educators who love what they do, and it shows. I'm really grateful for your participation in our Hawaii education my son is a graduate from Kalani High School, and oh, yeah. uh, I, I don't know if he can balance his checkbook, but I think I'll go home tonight and ask. Thank you, <laughs> you two, for being on board. I, I appreciate your time, and if there's anything I can do to support you and where you're going with your program, you need to let me know because I don't have any trouble asking at all. <laughs> thank you so thanks. much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And so for those of you that have watched this evening, thanks for sticking around. The program is always good. I don't know if you learn as much as I do, I hope so. You may, maybe you know it all, or maybe you don't. Next month, we're going to have a great show. Make sure that you tune in. It's on death and love. Death and love. It's going to be a deep, heartwarming, sensitive, and intimate conversation about our loved ones and what we can do to support each other uh, during the rougher times and why the people that are in the business love what they do and it shows. So we look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks. Aloha.